Anyway, let's get started with the Bible study. This book is, Lord Change Me, is by Ellen Christensen. She is a minister's wife, and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a background on it. I printed you out a thing, but I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to let you, y'all take it home and you can find out more what it's about. But um, session one of this book will teach us to search our own hearts, whether we're leaders or members of the group, to go, and, and teach us to go through the process uh, that's described in chapter one of how you can change your attitude. We have to change ourselves. We can't change the other person. Talk to me, but... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't change the other person, so we have to change ourselves. We can't make them change. We can't try to manipulate them to change because it just doesn't work. So we have to learn to change our attitudes and the way we react. And that's one of the things she really teaches you in it. And uh, we have to learn to motivate the group that's with us, working with us, whether they're Christians or non-Christians. This is a book that non-Christians can even study, but they have to understand they can't really hear from God like they should if they haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm just going by, I'm trying to give y'all excerpts out of her book so that, she, you know, you can understand that, you know, if somebody's interested, they can try it. You know, even they're not, they're not a Christian. They're not going to really understand it like a Christian will. But that might be what will draw them to the Lord. Um, but we need to be able to see what he wants us to change, what needs to be changed in us. The third one is to help each person open his life to God's changing process by leading him to pray sincerely, Lord, change me. Um, to prepare the, ourselves for the Holy Spirit to make this life-changing goal. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Arthur. To, to, change, to, uh, to allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to change us in this life changing goal, we have to be prepared to want to change. We have to be willing to listen to Him and to conform to His will for us so that we can be in His Son's image. And that means we have to truly obey what He asks us to change in our lives. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Ellen Christensen and why she started this, why she ended up writing this book, Lord Change Me. In the beginning, she was teaching. Her husband was a minister. She was teaching Sunday school and she was going, having prayer times with other women and teaching other women how, you know, helping them learn how to pray in different subjects and in different ways. And so people especially men in the church, began to call him Miserous Evelyn Christensen. And, you know, picking at him. And she felt really bad because he was being picked on. And so it had really tore her up. And so she got up one morning at 5 o'clock and she went downstairs to her prayer closet. And she started praying and asking the Lord to change her. Well, her husband come downstairs. He missed her. And he came downstairs and he said, Evelyn, can I join you? And she said, yes, but she says, Chris, I'm not praying for you. I'm praying for me. So I need to be changed. I'm asking the Lord to change me. And so he told her, he said, Evan, you are doing what God has asked you to do. He says, I don't care what they call me. He said, I don't care if they call me Mrs. Evelyn Christians. It just doesn't matter. He said, God has got you doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I want you to do what God wants you to do. So she started praying and just going through the Bible and learning things and saying, Lord, how do you want me to change? You know, how am I supposed to change so that people won't look at my husband like he's Mr. And he's that, you know, he's not the main minister, but that he's following in my footsteps instead of. And so she started studying the Bible. And reading verses 
and just going to wherever he told her to. And one of the main things that she read, and this one's a hard one. This one's a hard one for any woman. Not for the men. This one's a hard one for the woman. I'm here about wanting to leave this one out, but God won't let me. <laughs> it's 1 Peter 3, 1 and 2. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they might also, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Well, you know, we're supposed to be in subjection to the Christian leadership of our husbands. Some of us not always, not always married to Christian people, men. So there were some things we just couldn't do. But I was, when I was looking at this verse today and typing it on here, because I didn't have a computer to type until today, uh, I looked at it and it said, Lord changed me right beside the side of it, my handwriting, in the eighth month of 2000. So I actually, I think this was, I went back and I was looking at years. In 97, I went through this Bible study with another group from another church. And in 2000, I was doing it on my own because I needed help that year when my daddy died. A lot of other things were going on. So uh, this was one of the verses he gave me in 2000, the eighth month of 2000. And uh, with every Christian, so the nurse problem she came against fighting was her daughter went off to, was going off to college. And she was sitting down talking to her daughter, and her daughter says, Mama, I don't want to hear any more of your ideas on any subject. I'm tired of hearing your ideas and your, what you're teaching people. I'm just tired of it. I want to do my thing my way. And so she said it upset her so bad that she ran upstairs, and she got in her prayer cards, and she started praying, Lord, change me. Lord, change me. Don't change my husband. Don't change my daughter. Don't change my other kids. Don't change my pastor. Don't change my co-workers. But change me. And when you, when you start going through this book and you listen to the things she says and the way she says them and the experiences she went through to get there, she went through 14 months of this Lord change me in hard study and learning lessons before she ever wrote the book, Lord Change Me. And um, so uh, she found this verse from her daughter when she when her daughter told her this. First John 3 2. Beloved, now are the sons of God, and it doth not appear what it shall what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we're supposed to be Christ-like, and to do that, we have to change ourselves. Um, session one of this book is about me, you, you know, it, the, the individual. It's not, you know, not you in a group, but you, me. And, and how God wants to change me. Whoever's studying this book, it's about, the first session is about them and how God wants to change them. Uh, the second one is about the seven methods God used to change me. Evelyn Christensen went through seven steps, seven methods of going back through her Bible and changing the Bible. Lord change me things and gathering it up. And the first four methods come straight from the Bible. His word. And she said, since God is the true only author who is always present with us while we read, I continually find it in my heart. She said, in other words, I put it this in my words. It was like running, my heart would start pounding, beating, racing. When she talked about, and it really did when she talked about 
when the Savior came back after his resurrection, and he met with two men on the Mass Road, and he opened up the scriptures to them and told them what the Word said. And that's kind of, you know, I can identify with her and what she said there, you know, about her heart racing. She said it in different words. I put this in my words. <laughs> but, you know, uh, God promised us all that we would, we would have wisdom. God promised his, all of his children wisdom and that we would have whatever that we would ever need to be trans to transform our lifestyles. Not what somebody else wants us to be, but for us to be what he wants us to be. And all the times that I have used this method, and I'm talking about myself now, I'm not talking about Ellen Christensen, I'm talking about myself now. I did it in a devotional in another church, in another group, I did it on my own. I've started it over again. Uh, that's when I started talking to people about joining me with it. I found that God does speak to you. Just, I've had so many Bibles that I have to go back through to find the dates. Because I've used so many different Bibles. That I've had to pay, turn page by page to find where he spoke to me. And put the dates, you know, I had the dates out for something. Best thing, and one of the things that I regret, I lost my book. But it's, the best thing you can do is make a journal. When you read that verse, and he stops you and tells you what he wants to change. It's not that you, he'll stop you at that verse. But you have to ask him, what is it in here that you want me to do? What is it that you want me to change? How do you want me to change? You know, you have to ask these questions. Sometimes you'll forget them. So if you make a journal, you'll have it back to go back to. With me, I lost my journal. I can't find it. I know I kept it, but I can't find it. So I've had to go back to Bible by Bible and find the dates. Um, but he does speak to me. And he speaks to me in his word. That's how I'm going to find out he, how he wants me to change. Um, we're changed as we study his word, the Bible, and that is the only trustworthy source of truth. Mm. The only one. The other three messages, the methods that the Lord used and changed me for Evelyn Christian, somewhere through prayer, and that is true with me too. Um, the first one is when I ask him, is admitting my need to be changed. God always hears and answers in ways that I never expected. Amen to that one. In ways that I need, never even knew I needed to change. And I can <coughs> amen again to that one. Because some of them are really hard. Some of them you don't really want to change. So the second part, the second session in the book is when I pray for others. When you're praying for somebody else and really pray, I mean really praying for them, and that's a part of this Bible study, is praying for the others in your group, praying for other people that you know, love your pastor, you know, whoever. You can't hate them. You can't gossip about them. You can't pray for them and do those things. You have to to learn. You learn. You don't have to learn. You learn through his word that you cannot hate somebody or gossip about them or feel bad about them or stay mad at them. You have to get through all that to do what he wants to change in you. And so when I pray for others means that I'm going to change my attitude about them and towards them. The third one is, of the session in the book is, when others pray for me, is about changes I see in myself as I'm being prayed for. And I brought, I'm going to read a little excerpt she had in here. Uh -uh. I forgot to do 
Did you get my glasses? Did you hold the mic up so Ms. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but I wanted to read a little excerpt she had in here. Really? About. You, you want me to hold it? I have trouble holding this thing up. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. I've got to need my glasses for this. But um, when she says, my prayer for others, or uh, when others are praying for me in, in chapter, the session three of the book, she says that she sees how she's being changed by others' prayers. But she also states that God showed her the dangers in that too. And um, I'm sorry. I guess God didn't want me to read it after all. But anyway, she says that even though you're pray others are praying for you, they might not always be praying the best way for you. That um, it can be a dangerous process. So you have to also bind those feelings, you know, and ask the Lord to protect you as you're changing and even as others are praying for you. Um, that was kind of unsettling to me the first time I read it. And, and it was unsettling to me this time when I read it. Because I don't really always think of somebody else praying, prayers really going against me. Um, it's not always God doing the, the changing. It's according to how others are praying for you too. Uh, in James 3.15 it says, This wisdom descendeth not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, and devilish. We can be changed by others, by our own sensual selves, by demons, not always by God. So we have to be careful, even though we know that others are praying. And even though they believe that they're praying good for you, sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Uh, getting into studying this session is, we'll, we'll teach you more about the harm, the ways that others can pray for you. Um, how, you know, you've heard the pastor say before, people can walk in that door and let Satan come with them. So you have to pray. God's with you all the time. The Holy Spirit's with you all the time. He's with you outside this building. You bring him in this building with you, and he's here. It's wherever you go, as long as you take it, carry it with you. So, you know, it's up to you to recognize and realize what, how others are praying and how it might be harmful to you. Um, we can be changed. We can be changed. We can change. If we allow God to change us the way he wants to change us, we can be changed. Through the Lord changed me, seven biblical principles. Um, this book was written so you can have an incredible potential for a deeper walk with God and the joy of changed relationships with other people. Um, with a lot of it, I found over the years, I forgot a lot of it, left behind a lot of it. So that's why I've studied it so many times. But, because um, we forget. We let nature, we let our own selfish personalities take over. So we forget those things that we learned before. Sometimes we really have to go back and study them again. Sometimes I take out the things that my mama left for me right now and read them because she was a very 
And she wasn't a perfect person, but she was a very prayer, great prayer, prayer warrior. People call her all the time, you know, for prayer, to be a prayer warrior. And she was always writing things down. She was, or she was always cutting out things that really meant something to her. So a lot of times I take them out and just read them. Um, but if you decide, even if you know, if even if you decide to do this on your own, you don't want to do a group thing. Make your journal and of what you learn from that verse. Um, book will book will have Bible verses in it, and each chapter that will help you to know where to start reading. He'll teach you how to, when you're supposed to learn to stop and not read any further. All you have to do is listen to that small, small still voice in here. God will pop that word out at you. Or he wants you to stop. And believe me, he does. Um, and you know, you just, if you're in tune to him, if you pray and ask him for the knowledge and wisdom before you start that day or start that chapter, you will, he will stop you where he wants you to be stopped. Um, this is a, you have handouts to do with this thing to help you get through it. Um, I guess the main thing I, that means a lot to me is that I learned, I really learned to listen to when God wanted me to stop some works. And that's not just in my, this, this book, but it's in my daily devotions. And I've learned to start doing, since I started this time, I've learned to start doing a journal again. I had quit doing journals. Now I've started doing journals again. So just think about it, pray about it. Ask God if he wants you to do this Bible study. I really believe that there's people that can really learn something from it and, and really see a change in their life. And it actually can make a change in other people's life because they watch you. you know, if they see the joy of the Lord in you. They see your kindness. You know. Whatever. You get mad at somebody. You get upset with somebody. And you might not want to say anything to them. You not want, might not want to speak to them again. But God says, hey, listen to me. That's not the way I would have you to do it. That's not what I want you to do. Because that's not the way my son would do it. And I really have to, had to learn that lesson the hard way. Really. So just think about it, pray about it. Ask God if he wants you to, to study this book. One thing I want to ask you in the very end is, are you willing to change in any way God wants you to? That's it for the night. Uh, Wait a minute, you got a few more minutes while I'm supposed to scratch my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. I, I, I wish I had a feel that thing, but I lost it. But she explained it so well about how the third session about... Um, you know, how others praying for you can be, can be harmful. So, and that, you know, to me, that was a lesson that I really think, I, you know, when I read what she wrote, I thought, I haven't thought of that in a long time. Norma? Um, I don't know if you remember Brother Tim Youngblood that used to come yep. out here. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a message that, that he talked that, uh, about and it was about prayer and not only praying, but receiving prayer. Yeah. You have to ready yourself uh, to be in tune, you know, with the Lord and the Holy Spirit and be open to Him and to, uh, to give yourself and to be receptive to what the Lord has to give you. But He also said that if anytime you have other
others to pray for you. It's not a matter of just knowing that person or not knowing them. It's a matter of justice, justice, just as soon as you recognize a false spirit of blackness, a deepness, an evil piercing you or hovering over you uh, or invading you, invading the goodness of God that was that you were seeking and that others were seeking for you in the prayer. But to immediately come against that in the name of Jesus and say, I do not receive that in the name of Jesus. That particular evil that is trying to penetrate the prayer area that's being prayed for you. And uh, even if you're in the audience and it's being prayed for someone else, uh, to, to, you know, to pray that on their behalf. Uh, say, we do not recognize this evil spirit in the name of Jesus. Depart. You have no place here. You cannot stay in the name of Jesus. So, it, a big responsibility is, becomes on our shoulders when we, you know, the more we learn, the more we're in tune with the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and evil spirits. You, you just have to be ever alert and put Ephesians 6 to use and just stand firm with the Lord and um, combat all those fiery darts that Satan throws at us. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. Eddie? Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Brother Tim. Uh, there was another thing that he taught about when the pastor is praying for an individual for certain and laying hands mm -hmm. that nobody else should lay hands on that individual mm -hmm. because sometimes the anointing is drawn away. Mm -hmm. Lay hands on the pastor and Trust the anointing that's on the pastor and just pray a prayer of agreement. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, mm -hmm. and that he is the anointing flow through him according to God's will. Just a prayer of agreement and pray through the pastor instead of laying hands on the recipient. Because when you pray for the pastor, you're multiplying what he's praying. Because you might pray something entirely different, counteracting what the pastor's praying. I mean, it's pot. Both could be good. But trust the pastor's anointing and just pray agreement with his prayer. Anybody else? Anybody else got any comments? I've seen Benny do that. I've seen Brother Billy do that. And, and Benny wasn't there to hear Brother Tim preach on that particular subject. But I've seen him do it. And I've seen other people do that. Hmm. I remember Brother Tim. I just don't remember that one. So maybe it's a good thing that y'all brought it to my mind. <laughs> uh, she says here, However, God showed me the danger in the process and an unsettling truth. It was not always himself, the Lord, doing the changing. According to James 3.15, there are three other sources buying from my thoughts and actions, changing me. Section 3 of this book deals with the subtle or deliberate ways we are changed by other people. Our own sensual selves, by demons and not by God. The test of which source of wisdom we have heeded is a result it produces in us. Whether or not we are changed more and more into our goal of conforming to the likeness of Jesus. And as you go on, as you go on studying it, 
and you get into that third session, and it gets a lot deeper, and you understand a little bit more about what she's saying and, and, and what they've been talking about, what Brother Tim talked. I think I got tapes on him at home. I'm gonna have to pull them out. <laughs> I saved my tapes over the years. <laughs> anyway, um, Benny, would you lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in this your house tonight. And Lord, as we venture forth, we ask that you would change us in the way that you would have us to be so that we can be an example for others because for some, we're the only church they're ever going to see. And as long as we do everything in accordance with your word, then we will bring them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.